So yesterday, I went on Sky News to discuss Israel's onslaught against Gaza. The other panellist was Hen Mazig, an Israeli so-called influencer. Hen Mazig's been a apologist for the onslaught against Gaza, which to date, of course, has killed tens of thousands of people, including, of course, huge numbers of children. Now, this has been a truly fascinating experience because apologists for Israel's mass slaughter of Gaza know they've lost public opinion, know this atrocity is simply too grave and too obvious to defend, and they have resorted to deceit, smear, deflection, gaslighting, and the attempt to twist words out of their meaning, something we saw them do, of course, to the brilliant director, Jonathan Glazer. That has been my experience here. Now, a little note, normally I turn down media requests where the subject is specifically only on Gaza. I try to get Palestinian voices to be heard and platformed instead. I've been successful on a number of occasions. When you see me debating this issue on TV, it's overwhelmingly been on panel shows where this topic comes up among many others. I'll leave it to you to decide whether doing this was the right call. Now, let's just go through some clips from this. Let's just call it illuminating conversation. Um, and I'll have a little chat about my thoughts about them. To begin with, for context, uh, the Sky News uh, correspondent who was on previously had suggested it was politically impossible to suspend arms sales to Israel. Uh, in the case of the US, that is. And Hen Mazig claimed that a majority, or at least 13,000 of those killed in Gaza, were so-called Hamas terrorists. I can, I can sense your exasperation when you were looking at Joe, uh, at uh, Mark talking about Joe Biden's comments and, and, and there. Well, to be, to be clear, uh, Israel has said 9,000 so-called terrorists have been killed. But as the Israeli newspaper Haaretz pointed out, they include those who cross into a kill zone with an invisible line including many civilians, and when they cross, they are then posthumously termed terrorists with no evidence whatsoever. 40,000 Palestinians are likely to have been killed or more in Gaza because the official statistics exclude those buried under the rubble. Now, the point about Joe Biden and his position there, Joe Biden's hot air all the way through has been a defining feature of this conflict, so-called conflict, genocide onslaught against the people of Gaza. Um, he has armed and backed Israel as it has caused so much destruction, the vast majority, the, sorry, a large majority of Gaza's civilian infrastructure is now severely damaged or destroyed, so Gaza is now a different colour and texture when looked at from space, uh, where around 13,000 plus children have died violent, horrible deaths, either with their buildings coming down on top of them or being burned and cooked slowly to death or suffocated or both at the same time. Um, and that point, which I did think was editorialising on, on, on the part of your journalist, was that it was beyond any doubt or any reason that, you know, it was completely unthinkable that the US could pull the plug on arms because that would then pose an existential threat to Israel. That's in Israel's court. Israel has decided to starve the people of Gaza. The fastest drop in the nutritional status of a population in recorded history, the most severe famine since World War II now beckons, you have people in the north at the moment who are starving to death and eating animal feed in order to live. As David Cameron, Foreign Secretary, not, not someone I naturally normally quote, detailed in a letter which led, I would, uh, I would note, to the sacking of the Israeli spokesperson Elon Levy, which is probably why you don't have him on your news channel anymore, is because Elon Levy made false statements about aid trucks being allowed in, which then David Cameron went through and said that wasn't true. Israel had gone to great lead to stop them coming in. The point I'm making is, Israel, all the way through this, has been raising civilian infrastructure to the ground. It has conducted the biggest killing of aid workers in recorded history. And the point I would make, and this is why I think there's a bit of journalistic malpractice which has defined this conflict, Israeli leaders and officials were very clear from the very beginning about what they were going to do. They didn't hide it. You don't have to go through leaked documents. You just have to listen to, for example, to Yov Gallant, the defence minister, who's in the war cabinet of three, who said two days after the atrocities committed by Hamas on the 7th of October, um, that, uh, that they were going to cut off food, water, and all the essentials of life on the grounds they were fighting human animals. And then on the 9th of October, he declared he was lifting all restraints on soldiers. And a day later, he said he was lifting all restrictions on Israeli soldiers. We've now seen that, and the impunity that Israel enjoys from the West has led to aid workers who shared their coordinates on a pre-approved route with massive World Central Kitchen logos who were chased from car to car with the drone until every single one was dead. Well, and I'll tell you this, if that's true with those aid workers, Palestinians, ordinary Palestinians, did not, don't have a chance. And Joe Biden has sat through well, all of this, wringing his hand occasionally whilst ensuring Israel has the answer. Let, me, let me give you a chance to respond. I'm interested that there's, there's a lot 
the, the, I'm sure some of the phraseology you won't agree with. But oh, quite a, a lot of this the is, facts as well. But, but some of this is facts, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Gaza is being uh, are, absolutely... Are there like, no trucks going into Gaza? Is that what you're saying? There no tr- there's no trucks with humanitarian aid. You're saying that 7 million tons of food today did not enter Gaza. Israel is lying can, about that. I can that. answer that question very clearly. Um, Israel has destroyed much of Gaza's domestic food production and agriculture. Yeah. The amount of food aid, as David Cameron has noted is much less than before the 7th of October, when the need is much greater. And not only that, the roads have been trashed, okay, for a start. Police officers, which guard those trucks, have been deliberately targeted by Israel, with Joe Biden's own administration condemning Benjamin Netanyahu uh, for doing that. Whether it comes to the infrastructure, get, or, for example, the, the ability to transport in, uh, uh, the, the aid around, is impossible now. Right. So th- mean, this is why the, the destruction a... of agriculture plus the, the inability to I mean, get... Maybe you take a pause because yeah. you, you're throwing um, a lot of hand no, and, and, and you know what, I, to... I do understand why this conflict raises a lot of emotions. I think we need to focus on reality. Uh, and I understand, especially when you are Jewish or Palestinian or Arab, why you feel so commi- so connected to this conflict uh, and, and really being hurt and upset. I'm upset. My family, my friends, I lost friends in October 7th. Um, I don't understand why you are so... Uh, because I object to genocide. That, because but, I'm a human being. Uh, and of course, it's not a genocide. Because I'm a human being. That's why would I you call every war a genocide? Or, or so no, what is a I genocide? Just, because you're seeing the deliberate attempt to starve a population to death, which Israel's own leaders said at the beginning. I, I, of the I think. I think we, we, let, let's, Israel let's, is now on wait, trial at the International Court of Justice. And what did they say? This is, did they say it's a genocide? Look, they cut, then, so genocide? do you know how the just quickly on that? Well, they can't do that at this stage. Right, they, so they, they can't do it. No, no, no. So why do yeah. you bring no, it up? Because, because, why, because that's what you do. Because that's they what you've said, done this whole time. Because they said oh, it was no. plausible. Pieces of Fine. ideas that are, said it was, that are false. They said it was a plausible case. You so make a plausible case. The Court of Justice, you can both win that argument, all right? Okay. Both of you can win on the international court. Right. No, they haven't said it's a genocide. Yes, they, they have said it's a genocide. They can't say it's a genocide yet. Just to get the facts A few things there. It doesn't actually try to rebut many of the key facts that I presented. Now, the point about food trucks is, as David Cameron has noted, that the Israeli state has put huge numbers of blocks in place to stop food trucks from getting in, while the destruction of Gaza and its infrastructure, the lack of security, plus the destruction of local food production and agriculture has altogether helped conspire to create famine as a consequence of Israel's actions. Now, I'm still astonished that he genuinely asked me, Hen Mazik, why I cared about the people of Gaza, even though I'm not Jewish or Palestinian or Arab. I mean, what? Sometimes you just hear things, hear questions or things people say and just wonder how someone can end up uttering something like that. The idea you should only care about the suffering of others if you share is if you share their ethnicity is one of the most morally bankrupt things I've ever heard. It's baffling someone would just come out and even ask that question. Some of us believe that the lives of human beings have equal worth irrespective of their ethnic group or religion and that you should stand against horror being inflicted against fellow human beings irrespective of their characteristics. As it is, the Palestinian people have suffered generations of injustice, ethnic cleansing, occupation, siege, land theft and illegal colonisation, mass slaughter, even before this, apartheid, all round brutal treatment by the Israeli army and now a genocidal onslaught, crucially with the direct involvement and complicity of Western governments. That's the key point. Our governments have leverage over Israel and in the case of the US can simply stop all of this slaughter and injustice if they so choose. Now, Let's hear this particular argument, which is offered up, uh, the following argument that is, by the presenter, because it's an interesting argument which is often thrown around, and we'll hear my answer to it. If Hamas were to release the hostages tomorrow, Mm. what happens then? Uh, Look at the West Bank. Look at the number of people who are being slaughtered in the West Bank since this began. Last year alone, before the 7th of October, 240 Palestinian civilians, 40 of them children, were killed in the West Bank. And we were told that was a ceasefire. In the West Bank now, people are being driven from their homes and they're being slaughtered. The West Bank is not run by Hamas, it's run by Fatah, who put down their arms and accepted a peace process. What we're seeing in Gaza already, this idea of releasing the hostages, which I want. Taking those hostages was a severe war crime, a grave and unacceptable war crime. And the only way hostages have been released in any significant number is through ceasefire and prisoner swaps. That includes those prisoners who have been, need to be released. And again, the information that's come out today of the treatment of these prisoners who are held without charge, with their handcuffed so much that they've been amputated, as well as the work by Save the Children, which is detailed how child detainees are sexually and physically abused. Oh, and I'm now, it's talk- very important can, I, 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 that, we, I, that we talk about this. I want to give you to- Well, there's a key point here that the hostages have only been released in significant numbers uh, because of a ceasefire and prisoner swap. The abuse of Palestinian prisoners, including children, who courageous Israeli journalist Gideon Levy describes as Israel's hostages, all of that's been almost entirely erased from the discussion here. 
Now, Hen Mazig also went through crimes committed by Hamas and then suggested that there were people who went on television to defend Hamas, gesturing at me as he did so. Um, and I responded to that as well as spoke about human shields. Well, I'd is, like to, oh, do I get to answer any of that? Or? Uh, I, I'd like to move on. Lots of Which is this, Owen? I don't think we could just have misinformation on national television that isn't corrected. What are you saying is misinformation there? Uh, well, I mean, first he accused me of defending Hamas, uh, which I have to say, those smears might have worked once, but it just people okay. watching this think you're desperate. The point about human shields, a brilliant piece of investigative journalism in Plus 972 magazine by the brilliant Israeli journalist Yuval Abraham revealed the use of artificial intelligence, a system called Lavender. And what that does is generate a whole load of low-level operatives generated by artificial intelligence uh, with a collateral damage level per person of those targets of up to 20 civilians. The idea, which, which we have to say, the IDF has said that it uses this for information right. purposes that it has not used. OK, well, OK, well, well, six separate intelligence sources briefed this brilliant investigative Israeli journalist. Now, you can see what's happened there. There's, what they do, according to this information, is they wait for those operatives to go home when they're in bed with their families there and they blow them up and they blow up their kids and they blow up their families. Can you imagine Hamas was going around blowing up soldiers, Israeli soldiers, in their homes with they their children. They literally did that. Now, this is, this is, well, well, and, and you, think that's, you think that's unacceptable? Okay. I do. The question but Israel is doing that state sanction. The question I've said they've committed... That. Let's, let's have a reasonable... Now let's listen to this question from the presenter, then what happens? I mean, uh, let's pick up what some of the things Hen has, has been saying, which is that, look, we can talk so much about what Israel is doing in Gaza, but ultimately Hamas created this war? I think if you start with the clock on the 7th of October, that's absurd. Obviously, in 1948, the Palestinian people were driven from their homes, three-quarters of a million. The vast majority of the people in Gaza are the descendants of those 750,000 people who were driven from the homes, 15,000 of them slaughtered at the time, 1967, yet another act of ethnic cleansing, an illegal occupation, the longest belligerent okay, occupation. Let's, let's talk about what's well, happening here. Right, well, we haven't got time for well, the why, why, ask me the the, why ask me the question then? Obviously, I'm not going to go, oh, yeah, actually, this all started on the 7th of October. Nothing else is relevant. I'm going to talk about the context of Palestinian suffering, repeated violent ethnic cleansing, the longest belligerent occupation in modern times, apartheid as defined by human rights organisations, including those in Israel itself, siege, land theft and illegal colonisation, as well as mass slaughter. The thousands killed between 2008 and the 6th of October 2023, 96% were Palestinians, let alone mass incarceration, the brutality meted out by the Israeli army on a daily basis, we could go on. I mean, if there's not enough time to talk about that, surely he should have thought that that would be the response anticipated based on the perspective I have. Why ask the question if you don't have time? Baffling. And the problem with this is generally the media has stripped historical context, even relatively recent historical context from the horrors of the last six months. It hasn't often sought to educate people on that context. And even when anyone tries to bring it up, they've often faced a very dismissive response, particularly I would note when it's Palestinians who've done this. Right, now let's listen to the final part as it all goes south. Oh dear, oh dear. In terms of arms, uh, Alicia Kearns, the Conservative MP and chair mm -hmm. of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, in a leaked recording said that the government had received legal advice that Israel was in defiance of international humanitarian law. What that legally necessitates is Britain ending all arms, arms sales, but also ending all cooperation and sharing intelligence. Now, you're right, Britain doesn't supply that many arms, but if it ends arms sales, that then puts huge pressure on Germany, which has decided to make the Palestinian people pay for the grievous crimes it committed by oh, attempting to exterminate on, the, Germ uh, the Jewish people. Come on, have some distance. Um, and and, Please, and the second... And no, the second I won't point, let you... Well, the, yeah, the memory and, and the, of the, the other Holocaust will not be used this okay. way. How dare you? You're it not Jewish. Be used. Don't it do that. It shouldn't really, be used. Really, don't do it. It this shouldn't be used line, to force the Palestinians. Even for you, it's a red line. It shouldn't be used to force the Palestinians. Let's be clear. You are... What are you saying, then? I think Hen believes that you are... that you are disparaging the memory of the Holocaust. Of course, because he just did. No, I didn't. You I said, said Germany is making Palestinians I said Germany's pay, pay yes, for the six yes, million that were killed yes, in the I Holocaust. Did. Yes, I absolutely This is absolutely disgusting. I can't believe no, you're you, you, I, you I stand by what I said because it's absolutely true. Um, I was are you saying that wow. Germany is supporting Israel because of what happened yes, in it's, the it believes it rather make, than it, punishing it, it, it the believes, Palestinians? It believes Germany. Germany has decided it can make up for its obscene guilt 
by forcing and somebody else guilt. to pay for the crimes that Germany committed. Yeah. It's a very straightforward wow. point. There's nothing offensive about it. It's a of, very of obvious course point. it's offensive. I'm telling now, you, it's now, offensive. In, and I'm in, terms of, in terms of, in terms of, in terms of, in terms of, will not take it back. No, I, I because okay. you don't care about I, Jews. Because you, you know, don't care about you know what's interesting? Okay. I interviewed a German Israeli. Let's, I interviewed a I interviewed a German Israeli. It's really, and people should check that interview the German Israeli. The one person's one person's opinion is not definitive. And I think I do need to. They're shutting down Jewish people in Germany who speak about Gaza. The point about arms, which we were talking about, Israel has destroyed the medical system of Gaza. That itself is a genocidal act. There's no functioning healthcare system. They just destroyed Al Shifa Hospital, the biggest hospital in Gaza. It's been used by Hamas. Now, well, you think, everything, was... you think everything's used by Hamas, so you, you can point well, everything no, no, about Hamas. No, no, no. Now, 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 we, we can't make clear uh, well, uh, questions well, like that. Okay. There, there are, clearly, there is Hamas you know what, infrastructure it's, it's across Gaza. It's According disturbing. to every intelligence you know, organization, it, every in the world. single medical facility and hospital in Gaza has been attacked. That imposes a daily death sentence on everyone who has cancer, it's heart problems, really impossible. people who are pregnant, okay. pregnant uh, women I've, 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 who are having... Hen, quickly. No, no. I need well, to let Hen have sorry, a, a response. Sorry, babies who are having their limbs amputated. We well, OK, let's just have some basic facts here. These are the words, I'm not going to quote, of the German Chancellor. That is the equivalent of the German Prime Minister. Our own history, our responsibility deriving from the Holocaust, makes it our permanent duty to stand up for the existence and security of the State of Israel. This responsibility guides us. The German state has never tried to hide the fact that it is unequivocally stood behind the state of Israel, including arming it to the teeth in the current context as Gaza's race to the ground as a form of reparations for the grotesque and unprecedented crime it committed in the Holocaust. The worst crime in human history. The mass extermination by industrialised means of the Jewish people. And it should have made reparations. But those reparations are not being paid by Germany here. They're being paid by Palestinians. And Germany now justifies Israel's murderous onslaught publicly, as well as arming it to the teeth, as I say. Now, the response to a basic point that Germany is making others pay for the crimes Germany has committed, heinous crimes, has been mayhem on social media from apologists for Israel's onslaught, who have, in the most shameless and cynical way, tried to twist my words so that when I spoke of the obscene guilt of Germany, I obviously mean... Germany's extreme guilt, its guilt for an obscenity, the Holocaust. They tried to suggest that I meant it's obscene Germany feels guilt. Makes no sense in that context or even in general. Who would talk, what does even mean, who would ever say someone has, a, you know, a, a sense of guilt of, that's obscene? It doesn't make any sense. Obviously, I was talking about the crimes, the heinous crimes committed by the German state in the Holocaust. That's... What, what is meant by their obscene guilt. They rightly have an obscene guilt. That is, they are guilty of a crime which is obscene. That's what I was talking about. Just as they tried to do over the Jewish director, Jonathan Glazer, by twisting his words to mean something completely different. And all over social media, these apologists for mass murder have suggested I'm anti-Semitic, a disgrace, and I should be fired and driven from public life. For what? For saying that the German state has decided, not least as it arms a genocidal onslaught, that others must pay for the hideous crimes committed by the German state within living memory. It's simply a fact. It can't be rebutted. And I know it can't be rebutted because amidst all the outrage, no one sought to offer a counter-argument. There isn't one because it's true, as the German state has publicly said itself. Why is this happening? I circle back to the beginning. Everything we said, that is those who oppose this crime of historic proportions, has been vindicated in the worst possible way. Mass killing, famine, unimaginable suffering. Some of the worst crimes of the 21st century committed on a daily basis. And the apologists for this hideous onslaught, no public opinion, has shifted drastically against them. They know they're utterly morally exposed for having legitimised and supported this crime of historic proportions. So all they've got left is twisting words, trying to turn the world upside down, to feign moral outrage and portray the opponents of mass murder as the real extremists. Well, that strategy, my friends, has run out of road. This crime's too big, too extreme, too unapologetic. Those responsible for it and those who've cheered it on know they're not getting away with it this time. So all they can do is lash out in the most cynical and indeed twisted way possible. Well, the lesson there is we're going to win this. But the tragedy is that it is not going to save the lives of so many. And we have to keep fighting to end Western complicity in this slaughter of Gaza. Please like and subscribe. Do share this video. Uh, I would love to hear your comments. Um, you can keep the show on the road at patreon.com forward slash Joseph for listen to us on podcast. I'll speak to you soon.